good afternoon. Today I thought we'd take a trip to Klong Toei Market. And once I get to the corner I'll stop and I'll explain to you the plan and uh, who would benefit in watching this particular video. So Wikipedia claims that this market is actually the largest fresh food market in Bangkok. And I suppose the question we're going to find out today is, is it? So there's one thing we can achieve in this video. And we also want to understand a bit more what a wet market actually is and form an opinion as to whether we feel wet markets are a good thing, a bad thing. We don't really see these type of markets in, in Western countries such as Australia where I come from. But in Asia, these are very common. I buy all of my produce from the wet market. Any other filet might go to the shopping centre, so there's tops, there's Big C, but I, every second day I go to the wet market and I buy fresh produce. I just wanted to show everyone uh, how to get from the convention centre station to the market. Now you can see just behind me here, this is actually the entrance, just here, to the convention centre station, which is on the MRT line. This is exit number one, and it also has wheelchair access. And if I just flick my camera, you'll see that the market is just where those seven lights are, so it's probably only about 100 metres walk, right in the heart of the biggest fresh market in Bangkok. This is the place where all of the shop owners, all of the street food vendors buy their fresh produce and it's 24 hours a day and that is because Bangkok is 24 hours a day. That's why if you come to Bangkok and you see a street vendor in the morning serving up something fresh and you say how the hell did they get that food? Well they've been to this market, to the Klong Toei market to get their fresh produce. This is a 24-hour city, folks. This is not Adelaide. This is not even Sydney, Australia. This is a 24-hour city that has a market that is open for 24 hours a day in the middle of the city. This is generally where I uh, park my scooter. You can see that the scooter seems to be the favourite uh, transport method around here, given the tight streets. Through this section is actually where all the meat uh, vendors are. There's a few vendors that actually have already packed up and gone because it might be that on Sundays they clean the market. There's some frogs if you're into frogs, 75 cents, 75 baht per kilo. And my favourite section is actually through here, it's the fish section. So there's basically some prawns, some squid, all different types of fish. Uh, I actually regularly buy my fish from this particular vendor. They look like a catfish, but I don't know whether they are. They're actually very tasty, and I, I, oh, sorry, mate. And I actually do eat this fish. In fact, uh, I will actually take a picture tomorrow when I cook some and show you exactly what my curry looks like that I put this into. This lady, I often will buy chicken here as well. But you can see there's no real rhyme or reason. Everything's just kind of scattered everywhere. This is the fruit and veg again. And you might say, well, why do they call these things a wet market? Well, I'll give you a, clue. I'll give you a couple of clues. A lot of moisture around. And a lot of the shop owners you'll see are wearing gumboots. I think that's probably a bit of a giveaway as well. I suspect they don't want to get their feet wet. But animal juices, fish juices, basically they're all just falling all over the place. So that's why they call it a wet market. The whole market floor is wet. So I'm actually wearing my flip-flops because I guess I'm going to get a little bit of food uh, juice on me, which I can easily clean off. But I can't clean off my uh, Reeboks or my Nike casual shoes very easily. So this looks like the beef stall, which looks actually very inviting. Uh, I'm going to stake for a while, so oops, I reckon I could, uh, next time I'm in the market and I'm actually in a buying mood, I'm going to come back here and see if I can grab some of that beef. So, probably one of my favourite uh, 
parts of the diet these days is actually fish and I, I do actually eat these fish uh, regularly. And you can see they're about 60 baht, so that's uh, in terms of Australian dollars, that's about three dollars for a full fish. Hello, <laughs> how, are you? how are you? But uh, as always, the, the locals are extremely friendly, but you can see they are, they are, they are packing up. You're packing up early today. C cleaning of the market today? Uh, cannot speak English. Okay, I cannot speak Thai. It's good. It's all good. So I'm really tempted to grab some of these um, these prawns. They look great. But this again is uh, pork, and you've got your pork livers. Um, one one Thai friend just said to me one day that Thai people eat everything, and I certainly believe that, having lived here for a while. So one of my one of my real uh, challenges when I come here is actually not to buy more stuff. As I said, I come here at least two to time, three times a week, and I end up going home with like a huge number of bags full of fresh produce. So in my freezer right now. I have a heap of food. I have lots of uh, beef, lots of pork, lots of fish, two or three different varieties of fish, all because I actually haven't got around to eating it. So I'm, I'm tempted to buy those prawns over there and maybe some more fish. Um, I, I just have to, oh, I'm just getting in the way here, so I, I actually have to just pull the reins back a little bit because I just get so sucked in by the beautiful food that's actually at this market. This would probably be the center of the market I guess if I just pan around so that's where I've just come down that's where all the, the uh, meat is this is kind of one of the main streets here and this goes back go, towards, go, go. this one goes back towards the main road and there's the old mate hey girl, mate <laughs> good on you he's, uh, he's one of the workers he's rushing trying to rush through like everyone so even though this is just a little walking street along here you get the motorbikes they just basically come through and often you see a motorbike come up to a stall and just buy something off the motorbike. Um, I'm not quite at that level yet, but I do ride my motorbike down this little street regularly to get out because it's the only way to get out onto the main road without having to go around the big block. So I, I do, I am basically, I'll be on the back of this light a bit later in, in the afternoon. So if you like ginger and chili, and basically you're in the right place here so this is kind of like a this particular mix here I do buy this and what it is it's it's actually like a red Thai curry paste as well as you've got a green one so this guy's got some really interesting things he's got some crabs which look very inviting I, um, I must learn how to cook a crab one day and actually how to how they eat these things because they look great but he's got different sizes and um, they look like top quality crabs. Bought myself some uh, limes because I use a lot of limes. But this section of the market is actually closing down. So clearly, I was right when I said earlier that I think Sunday night is when the market will actually completely empty out so the cleaners can come through and, and basically disinfect the whole place. So, so they're just packing up and you can see here this is the uh, fish but uh, when you see them on the table they're still jumping around um, fresh as the day you bought them because they actually keep them alive right up until the point they're sold so here's some of the local workers the fishmongers and the workers preparing fish these guys are absolutely professionals they just chop these things up like they're like a carrot there's a whole there. Yeah, they would typically sell most of this produce to the restaurants in the area in Bangkok, Greater Bangkok, and also all of the street uh, vendors, street stalls that we all love so much as a foreigner. Uh, this food is going directly to them. So here we have some a rice vendor. You can see the all different types of rice and different prices accordingly. They sell them by the scoop, they sell them by the big bag at the back. I'm sure like everybody in these markets have been hit really hard with the COVID. But I have been coming here during the COVID period to get my fresh produce and there still is a lot of people that come through this market. It's a very popular place to come. 
as, as claimed by Wikipedia, it's the largest fresh market in Bangkok. So this is the dry fish, all types of dried seafood. So as many cloves of garlic that are they're in this market, there's probably about the same of amount of motorbikes that are actually here as well. So here we are in the duck section. You can see that they're selling the ducks for around about 80 baht per duck, which I think is pretty good value. So when you go to the street stall and you think, you know, you're getting duck and rice for 40 baht, you, well, you, they're only paying 80 for the whole duck. So they do make some money, these street stalls. And you can, of course, in any wet market, the animals have got to start somewhere. And I, guess what? They don't come here in a refrigerated truck. They come in here in live stock trucks. And these are all the birds that are waiting to be uh, processed. And uh, there's a few ducks. So these ducks haven't quite got to the table yet. You can see the guys are just out there skidding them. And uh, they'll actually be processed and sold. So this is a wet market, guys. If you don't know what a wet market is, well, welcome. Yeah, I think your eyes are being opened as we speak. Just enjoying his last moments of freedom. Some of the relatives have already been processed over the other side here. So again, when you, when you talk about a wet market, basically you see that there's animal dropping. Uh, you've got the ice protecting the the animals from obviously from the heat you've got the animal juices and you can see all the workers that actually work here they're either wearing waterproof flip-flops or actual gum boots of some description because it is a wet market and when they talk about China and their wet markets they're exactly the same as this the only difference is the animals that they actually uh, have got in production at their markets and it actually brings back memories of when I uh, was a reasonably young child, maybe sort of, you know, nine or ten. My grandfather actually used to obviously go up to the local farm, buy his skins, and um, prepare them for like our Christmas dinner. So it wasn't that long ago that a lot, a lot of the older generation in Australia and other countries, I guess, were doing this. But these days we don't tend to do this at home. Um, it's done in these wet markets. And it's just the way of the culture here. There's no, there's no judgment. It's just the way that these markets operate and they've been operating for hundreds and hundreds of years. This guy is actually preparing, preparing a fish. He's scaling. So we've got the main, especially the main area, the main en entrance and exit is this little alleyway here for the motorbikes. This truck's just decided to pull back and unload whatever we've got. But I'll, I'll let you know what's in this truck. Um, it's, it was like it was the most important delivery of the whole history of this market was in this truck with the way with this guy was back and back. So it was very interesting to see him uh, get all excited. So there's the mystery of the truck. We actually have on our hands a nice truck. Everyone's clapping their hands trying to sell their final final items. So this guy's got a fair, fair way to go. Oh, now we're getting to the what's near to my heart. The chili stall. Have a look at this. Have a look at this, guys. Just incredible. You want some chili? I'm feeling like you want some hot food. This bloke can help you out. He's, he's got a cupboard. He looks like he's sweating pretty hard. He might be just chewing on those without even cooking at them. So one thing that I've really struggled to find here is avocados. I actually don't mind an avocado occasionally. Even though I mainly would eat curries and stir fries nothing better than an omelet with an avocado on the side so so I just found this little uh, garlic cellar really interesting little stall pretty well just garlic and chili pretty small stall and here's a whole lot of the uh, workers there's the chicken Here's the ladies that are preparing the chickens over here. So, nice, cool, nice. 
And you can see that this is where they where they process. Hello. And um, they sort the chicken into the various cups. Operating this, this guy's mincing chicken over here. So you can see it's basically a streamlined operation back here. And that's the market just up the road. So this is just a basically a half a street back. And everyone's in gumboots, so getting back to the theme of being a wet market, this certainly is a wet market. I'm glad I got my flip-flops on. See chicken in here. Chicken, chicken everywhere. Basically it's just chicken. Chicken, the chicken factory. <laughs> so here's a few of the happy chicken workers. They're just all having a bit of a rest of the day. They had no idea what I was talking about. As I was. And what's more, I have no idea what they're talking about. But I think we're, we're friends. I, I sense from the smiles that we're friends. So here we are in the duck preparation area. There's another butcher. Uh, this is actually pork. And you can see these guys are working pretty quick. So I'm just wondering where that layer of uh, crackling is outside. Why, why there isn't someone outside actually cooking like this? This crackling because there's plenty of crackling around. <laughs> G'day mate, you're doing a good job. Good job, yeah. He's working his bloody ass off. I'm standing here filming him and he's starting to think, what the f***? So here's old mate from a different angle. These guys are really earning their money, I tell you. They, they don't uh, sit around and at their desk all day just twiddling their thumbs wondering what uh, he might have responded. These guys are really working hard. So this guy is actually just uh, getting the fish out of the bucket, they're live and he's just basically killing them and getting them ready to be processed outside. Hey, so it's towards the end of the afternoon, I've finished my tour of the fresh food market. It was a really interesting experience today to try to share it with my YouTube followers, the 25 followers that I have. Actually, sorry, I'm going to change that. I think I've got three subscribers so far, and I might have had 25 views on my first YouTube video, and I'm sure that about 10 of those views were mine. So if you're actually now watching this, my new video, please subscribe. Uh, enjoy my little spin on the world of Bangkok as I try to discover its secrets and unravel its mysteries please subscribe okay so I've just pulled into Soi Ten and just reflecting on uh, what we might have learned today at the market so first of all a wet market is somewhere that processes live animals so another reflection on the market today was that it was all tied. I actually didn't see one parang at the market. So I don't know whether that's because there's a lack of parang, which there is, or that we don't like that type of market where there's obviously slaughterhouse at the back, and we just like to imagine that our food just turns up um, and that it was always in the packet. There was no actual live animal when we're chomping into our piece of chicken. 